Okay, so uh, once again, welcome to this uh, webinar. Uh, in this presentation, I will explain the basics of the IFML modeling language, standing for Interaction Flow Modeling Language. And I'll also show you something about how to integrate IFML specifications together with uh, additional uh, interface and, uh, and the system specification described with other modeling languages, included BPMN and UML. So, as you know, IFML is targeted to the specification of the user interaction and the user interface model. Uh, the idea is, you all know that specifying the user interaction is a painful process. And in particular, it's probably one of the most painful phases in the software development uh, uh, process uh, overall. Uh, because of the complexity of the interfaces, and uh, uh, in particular due to the fact that interfaces are getting more and more diverse, you can now have uh, several different platforms where you need to implement different interfaces for the same applications, uh, and also because uh, users are expecting better and better user interaction uh, every day. On the other side, the other problem is that uh, the, the tools that can help you in designing and implementing the, the application uh, interfaces are quite bad. So basically, everything uh, resorts to uh, going back to manual development of, uh, of software interaction and software uh, UIs, especially for uh, the most advanced user interfaces. Because if you think to the current web interfaces that cover that are covered with AJAX and uh, uh, advanced uh, user interactions, uh, basically all the JavaScript that lays behind this needs to be written basically uh, by hand. And uh, on the, uh, this is even worse if you think about how bad are the, tool, the supporting tools like uh, debuggers and so on. So the, the proposal of IFML is to provide a standard for modeling the user interaction at the conceptual level uh, through a graphical modeling language that is uh, able to describe the user interaction at a platform independent level. Where with platform independent, we mean that this model that we describe uh, do not, uh, these models uh, do not depend on the technical implementing platform where you want uh, to <clears throat> target your application. For doing that, uh, the second step is to establish a common language uh, for, for specifying this kind of interactions. So we don't want a proprietary language. We don't want something that is used only by one company or by one tool. We want a standard language that is understood and uh, shared all over the world by any uh, tool vendor and by any uh, software designer. So that's why we uh, proposed IFML in OMG the object management group. As you know, this is a, a basically, it's, it's an international organization based in the United States that standardizes mainly software design languages, but also other things. Um, among others, uh, OMG standardized uh, UML and is now uh, the, uh, basically the, the, the promoter of BPMN. So in a couple of years, we uh, obtained the uh, standardization of the language, and now uh, IFML is in a beta version, uh, so uh, we uh, are able, still able to include uh, feedbacks and comments that can come by from, from, from users. Uh, and the expected uh, IFML 1.0 version is uh, due on, uh, if I remember well, February 2014. So uh, <clears throat> this, is, this is the general uh, introduction. What is uh, IFML about? IFML aims at describing the navigation paths of the users all over the, 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 the user interface and the content that appear in this user interface. These navigation paths are basically uh, triggered by events that users can uh, perform over the, the user interface. And IFML also allows to define the business logic link 
and the, the binding to the persistence layer, meaning the database where the information are stored. Um, anyway, the entire focus is on the front-end design. So, in particular, uh, the, the uh, main uh, purpose of the language is to focus on, on the interaction of the user. So, what are the relevant events, what are the relevant flows, what are the relevant content that appear in this interaction. IFML, instead, uh, uh, does not uh, cover the graphic parts and the visualization and rendering uh, part of the, of the user interface. <clears throat> so, in a sense, we can distinguish from the interface, meaning the graphical aspect, from the interaction, meaning the behavior of the UI, which is the actual focus of IFML. <clears throat> um, in other words, IFML focuses on the view part of a software application. And now I will uh, describe a little bit more in detail uh, what we want to cover. Basically, what we want to cover is coverage of mobile, multi-device, multi-views platforms, uh, sorry, applications, uh, with the uh, capability of dealing with dynamic information and events that could be produced by users or even by the system. All this is uh, supported by designing uh, the interaction flow that connect different components in the UI. Uh, in this big picture, we also take into account the user context, covering, for instance, the history of the navigation of the user, the, the kind of device that the user is using, the uh, platform that is using, and so on. And also, <clears throat> we support some modularization feature that allows for uh, more usable and reusable uh, modeling uh, modeling uh, practices. <clears throat> now I'll spend uh, just one minute uh, for, uh, covering the uh, basic IFML uh, ideas and concepts, and then uh, I'll show you some examples together with integrated uh, designs of, from different languages. So the main concepts in IFML are the ones you see here. The concept of container, that is a generic UI container that could represent, for instance, a web page or a window in a, in a desktop application or a screen in a mobile uh, uh, phone and these kind of things. But even uh, more detailed containers like uh, uh, pop-ups or uh, pieces of, the, of a page or small windows that appear here and there uh, when the user interact with the application. In the containers, you can specify view components. View components are mm, elements represented uh, by a box with rounded uh, uh, angles that describe some uh, the content you want to put into your application window or page. Components uh, are the, uh, let's say, the core uh, and the atomic element you can put into containers and upon which, upon which uh, users can uh, perform some events. So an event is a symbol represented by a circle and it represents any kind of happening that could cover user interaction like uh, clicks, drag and drops, um, and in mobile systems also more complex events like pitch or I mean, rotation of the screen, any kind of event uh, coming from the user, or also events coming from the system, like exceptions or uh, success or, fa or failure of some business logic and so on. The other uh, big actor in IFML is the concept of action. The action, instead, is a representation of a binding from the user interface to the business logic. So an action is simply a reference to some description of business logic behavior that is described somewhere else, typically in other models. But it could even be just a reference to some source code or to some 
textual description of the action. So these are the uh, elements you can put in FML models. These elements can be connected through flows. Flows are what we uh, what gives the name to the model to the modeling language because the language stands for the language name stands for interaction flow modeling language. So these interaction flows can be of two types: navigation flows and data flows. Navigation flows are flows where uh, that describe the navigation of the user from a piece of interaction of user interface to another piece of user interface. So the navigation flows are typically triggered by a user event, like a click or again a drag and drop and so on. And the navigation flows move the user from a part to another of the UI, but can also change the state of the UI. The, on the other side, <clears throat> data flows are flows that are meant to describe uh, navigation, uh, sorry, transferring of information from a component to the other. The result is that with a data flow, you can describe that some parameters pass it pass from from a component to another component, and the list of parameters that pass are descri is described by a concept called parameter binding. A parameter binding group is represented by a parallel uh, parallelogram and contains a set of parameter bindings that connect an output parameter from a component to the input parameter of the target component. They could be several and uh, parameter binding groups can be connected to data flows but also to navigation flows. <clears throat> so if we start from a very simple example where we want to describe something where we have a list of elements, we click and we get the detail of the element, the IFML model is represented like this. You have the component, you have the event that is the click of the user, for instance, over the one of the elements in the list, and you have the component that describes the detail of the, of the selected element. Over this, so the navigation flows describes the fact that the user moves from the selection of the list, of the artist from the list, to the selection, the, the visualization of the specific artist. And these navigations also entails that the selected artist is transferred to the input parameter of the target component called an artist. And this obtains the behavior we were uh, representing before. And then uh, obviously the complexity of the models could be increased. In this example here you have again the same list where instead you have two events where we could have a list, sorry, this is not exactly the same list, it's a list that contains both albums and artists. And in this case, what you can do is you can click on an artist and then you follow this path, or you can click on an album and then you follow this path. And XOR container says that these two subcontainers are shown uh, in a mutual exclusion depending on the click you have done, depending on the flow you have followed. So containers always contain components. Components are connect. Components and containers are connected through flows, data flows or uh, uh, navigation flows. Navigation flow start from events. As you see, containers can also have some tags that describe better their behavior. In this case, XR describes the fact that this container uh, splits into two parts that are mutually exclusive, but we could have, for instance, other kind of tags, like uh, the fact that, uh, for instance, a window could be modal or modeless, and so on. This simple example shows the fact that you have uh, two containers, the, a container called albums, you can click on an album in a list, and the effect is that you invoke an action called delete album, album deletion. And this action will have a reference to an external business logic that performs the actual deletion. 
once the action is finished, it produces an event that could be, for instance, success or, success or failure or any kind of uh, output event you can invent. And based on the event that happens, you follow a, a flow to a target page or a target uh, window. <clears throat> Components can be detailed better than just showing the basic uh, uh, symbol of a rounded box. In this example, we have a component that shows uh, a very simple uh, thing. We have a component called message writer that is actually a list. So here we, have a, we are adding a, um, um, an additional piece of information saying, saying what kind of component is this. And then within the component, we are adding an, some additional information. This additional information is, con, is described by the so-called view component parts. View component parts are pieces of information we add into components uh, that describes some uh, some some basically some property of the component. For instance, the data binding, meaning the connection to the some database uh, uh, database concept. In particular, data binding includes data binding to, uh, for instance, a, a table in a database or an entity in an entity relationship model or a class in a class diagram, together with as a an additional uh, component part, the conditional expression over this concept. In this example, uh, we are saying that we are showing in this list a list of mail messages where the conditional expression is that uh, the mail message that I'm showing must be into this list, this, this relation. Uh, similarly, you can define also other view component parts like parameters. This parameter state is supposed to be a parameter for this view component that is shown as a, a view component part and that can be the target for some parameter binding for incoming information. Now, this is uh, basically a very quick overview of IFML. What I want to show now is how IFML uh, complements well with additional specifications that you can have in your company describing other parts of the system or other part of the company itself. The, the thing is that instead, obviously when you design a software, the user interaction is just a part of that software. The remaining parts need to be specified anyway and typically companies that work in a model-driven approach uh, define also the other parts through diagrams and models. So th there is a very basic integ <clears throat> integration with other diagrams with IFML that is the so-called data binding. We have seen it uh, just now. The fact that you can connect a view component to a class diagram by describing the class and the attributes and the conditions over these attributes uh, for this component. This is already in place in FML and re in, in uh, version 1.0, we'll also have uh, <coughs> possibility of uh, uh, defining data bindings on other data models, including entity relationships, ontologies, uh, XML models, and so on. The second kind of uh, uh, joint usage of IFML is the one we have seen with actions. Actions let you design the fact that the user, your user interaction interacts with some business logic and this business logic can be specified in these two ways at the moment, as UML methods or as UML diagrams. So you can even say that uh, one specific action is actually implemented by a complex UML diagram, like a sequence diagram. Suppose you want to have, uh, I don't know, some kind of uh, uh, handshaking uh, between systems, then the handshaking can be described by a sequence diagram, and you can say that the action 
is implemented by that sequence type. We actually have uh, already some experiments where um, we connect our IFML models with two uh, uh, executable UML models for the business logic and then we generate the code including the behavior of the UML diagram. <clears throat> but this is a very basic way of connecting IFML with other uh, uh, modeling languages. Then IFML can be even more detailed because IFML also implements an extensibility mechanism where you can define your own extensions to the language. In particular, what you can extend is basically the kind of events, for instance, you can invent your own types of events that shall be uh, described by an icon inside the event icon, uh, basic icon, and also uh, other kinds of components. So here we have an extension showing that components can be lists, forms, details, element, and so on. The, and then analogous thing can be done for mm, view component parts. So for instance, for a form, we will have a specific view component part that is this, the field for the form, okay? And this is part of the language. So at the end, what you could get, you could have uh, uh, models like these, where you have uh, the specification of the view component that is used and its type, and also of the corresponding events. If you want more details on these examples, you can go back to your uh, to, to our uh, previous webinar on IFML, where we explained them in detail. This is another example. Again, we have a form view component into a container called message writer. Uh, the form has several events connected to it. Some of them are submit buttons. Some others are not even defined in terms of type of event but they have a name. You can add the fields to the form and you can add, uh, it's not shown here, but if you want, you can also add your events directly to the fields of the form so that you can say that this event only happens on this field, like, I don't know, the focus moves to this field or something like this. What you can also specify is that you can define so-called activation expressions. Activation expressions are annotations where you declare what is the condition for the associated element to be, uh, that must be uh, verified for having the element, uh, uh, let's say, active in the interface and visible in the report. Um, as you see, we have several parameter binding groups all over the model as well. Uh, one last thing I want to show you is that you can also generate events in this way. Here, you click on save, you invoke a saving a save uh, business logic uh, on the back end or wherever you want through this action. And then when this happens and concludes, it produces an event, you follow this link. And here we are saying that we generate, by following this link, we generate a new event that could be catched by other, by other uh, event catchers. <clears throat> this is another example where uh, you have, uh, again, the same usage of the components and the actions and the navigation flows and the data flow. Okay. Now, the question is, how can we use together other modeling languages in a, in a useful way? Here is a very basic overview. The idea is the following, that our design at the enterprise level typically includes several aspects. It includes use cases. It includes, for instance, business processes uh, and any kind of uh, description at the business level. And it also includes uh, more detailed descriptions for the execution of some business actions in terms, for instance, of sequence diagrams, day charts, and so on. Now, the thing is, IFML, that is located down here to the, on the uh, bottom right part of the, of the slide, is not detached from all of this, all this, because 
there is a strong connection between all these elements uh, due to the fact that obviously the business process at the business level that you need to implement must be uh, basically coherent and implemented by the UI that you are designing. And the analogous thing is that your use cases must be covered by your UI and the, the uh, concrete execution rules must be uh, referenced, for instance, by the elements in the UI. So now we're going to see how we can connect these things and how they can collaborate together for a better description of the system. So far, what you could do was only the part regarding your system design and business design without UI design. Now with IFML, you can cover also this part. Now, if imagine you had no IFML, basically the kind of relation you could build between modeling, uh, let's say uh, different models of your system is like this. You have a use case. Suppose the, here we are representing a rental of the, of the, let's say, of the car. The handle rental use case could be mapped to a sequence diagram that describes the fact that you have some steps to follow for renting a car. Now, from here to the UI of your system, there is still a big gap. Obviously, this will result into some user interface where some steps here will correspond to some uh, menus or links in the user interface. But the problem is there is no formal way for saying that. <clears throat> okay. Now, in, uh, be because obviously you can map each use case in your use case diagram to a business process. But the, the new part is that now you can connect every use case also to a, an explicit description in IFML of the user interface you expect. On the other side, you can also connect to some uh, concrete uh, uh, dynamic diagrams in UML. From the BPMM part, instead, the mapping is typically top-down. You start from a BPM model that describes the business, and then typically you need to define the user interface for every step. Because for instance, if you want to uh, book the car or check the customer or register the customer, you need a user interface in your system for every step. So the, the proposition here for UML, for, for IFML, is that basically uh, for every step in this uh, BPMN representation, for instance, the payment execution, you have a, an IFML specification of the interface. The, uh, this representation you see here is rep shown in terms of IFML modules. What you see is the payment execution IFML modules that you can connect back to a BPMN <coughs> activity in the BPMN model. So in the payment execution uh, module, you have an input port and an output port. In the input port, you accept the amount of money to be paid. And then here you describe the user interaction for executing the payment. The output port instead will produce the confirmation message back, received back from the, uh, the payment operation. So this is the typical way of mm, dealing with uh, BPMN integrated with IFML. And uh, this is already uh, very well covered in uh, web ratio, where you can define your business processes and then you can zoom in into each activity and see what is the user interaction model for that activity. Notice that the uh, IFML modules can also be defined uh, independently from BPMN because module is also a good uh, concept for again, obviously modularization and reuse because you can define the module and then you can reuse it everywhere 
anywhere in your uh, IFML models. So now, back to uh, our example. Uh, what, you, what you were doing before by mapping directly from UML to the user interface, now this is mediated by IFML. Because if you put in the middle an IFML model, you have a much richer way to describe your uh, interface. Because, for instance, for every use case, you can build your own, uh, sorry, for every actor, you can build, for instance, your own uh, window or viewpoint or piece of the model. For every use case, you can build a, a piece of uh, interaction that model that describes what should happen in the use case and if you have more detailed uh, specifications like sequence diagrams describing every step <clears throat> you can specify that every step corresponds to some events in the user interaction and to corresponding invocation at the business logic level then so so far basically we are at the same point but now the increased uh, expressive power of IFML is that you can enter here in the FML model and edit and change the, uh, the user interaction behavior by simply adding or changing the position of events and uh, components and so on. Uh, together with this, there is another important aspect that typically the company uh, Companies want to design not just uh, the, the user interaction and the, and the relation with the business logic or the business level, but they may have the need of describing different aspects of the enterprise models. So, for instance, you may want to describe the how systems are deployed. You may want to describe um, complex interactions to be executed, as, a example, as in the example I mentioned before, for a and shaking between systems and so on. Or you may, you may even have uh, some other kind of, say, models, for instance, mock-up models for your interface. All these are important features for your system, and you should not miss any of them. And then the other important point is that all of this must be coherent. So. If you have a UI supporting some behavior, this behavior must be described somewhere. And vice versa, if you have some behavior, you must reference it correctly from the UI. If you have some deployment uh, information regarding your architecture, this must be coherent with what happens, with what happens in the UI. And analogous uh, reasoning could be done with the uh, mockup design part. Your mockups could be an interesting input for designing the user interaction or vice versa. Okay, so uh, uh, the fact that the user interface is just one facet of the system uh, uh, implies that you want to connect it with the rest of your system design. And uh, the, the big advantage of IFML is that being IFML standard, and being it part of the MDA, Model Driven Architecture Framework of OMG, it's extremely easy to use it together with uh, the other pieces of the, for instance, of UML or uh, other OMG standards. <clears throat> um, for instance, uh, the ones we have seen so far. If you have a description that is precisely specified for uh, uh, showing how the interaction should happen between the client side, the server side, the web server level, the database, or external uh, behaviors, this must be taken into account when you design the user interaction. And the fact is that um, uh, you can decide that the same events that trigger the execution of pieces of sequence diagrams are also the events that happen at the UI level in the IFML models, for instance. 
Just to clarify this aspect, I want to spend a couple of minutes uh, in, uh, on, on uh, describing uh, what is the way IFML has been built. Uh, because IFML is a modeling language, and as a modeling language, it has a formal specification that is described in the IFML uh, specification document that is available on the OMG servers, already publicly available. Uh, <clears throat> the, uh, the, the additional thing is that IFML is specified in terms of a meta model. A meta model is, oh, sorry, it's something like this. This is just a small piece of the IFML meta model. It's basically, just to be very plain, uh, concrete, it's ba basically a simplified class diagram that describes all the pieces, all the elements of the modeling language. So for instance, here you see that IFML includes the interaction flow element that could be a view element, a view component part, an action, a port, an event, and so on. And interaction flow elements can have parameters. And uh, then you have the fact that the view element can be a view container or a view component. And then a view container can contain additional view elements. So this is a, a way of describing the concepts of the language. Uh, I'm, why I'm showing this? Because in exactly in the same way, IFML defines the relations towards the other modeling language, languages. For instance, here you see that a view component part, among the various other things, can be a content binding. And the content binding can be a data binding, because this is an ISA relationship. And a data binding is basically linked to a database, okay, just to be clear. Data binding is basically contains two points, three aspects. First, a link to a classifier. What is a classifier? Classifier is basically the official uh, term in UML for describing a class. And indeed, as you see, these pieces are uh, shown in gray because these are not part of IFML. These are part, as you see here, of the UML standard profile, UML 2.0 meta model classifier. So the classifier that is referenced in the data binding is actually a class of UML. Same thing, the, for instance, visualization attribute you have in the data binding is a reference to a structural feature in UML, and uh, where a structural feature stands for basically an attribute of a class in UML. This is about uh, the data, but the same happens for the behavior, because in the dynamic behavior, the content binding dynamic behavior basically lets you link a component through a component part to a behavior or a behavior of feature in UML. And if you go in uh, a little bit in deep in these names, basically, <coughs> The behavioral feature is, mm, sorry, uh, yeah, the behavioral feature is basically, and the behavior are the, uh, correspondingly the uh, uh, UML uh, behavior diagrams, dynamic diagrams, and UML methods in a class. So this is the way in which you can link through a dynamic behavior an element in IFML to a dynamic behavior specified again in the UML standard profile 2.0. Um, as you see, the dynamic behavior is linked by an action. So every action has a link to the dynamic behavior. Hmm? Okay. These two parts, data and, and the dynamic part, are the two core connections from IFML to uh, UML, basically. Uh, as I said before, in IFML 1.0, we will have a more general data binding concept that will let uh, people connect also to other kind of uh, 
uh, concepts in content models. Uh, and uh, the other thing we'll have in, uh, UML, uh, in IFML 1.0 is the link, the possibility of linking to towards BPMN or other modeling uh, languages of the dynamic world. So at the end, the big advantage of having a standard is the strong connectability to other modeling parts of your systems. And the fact that if you go and read the IFML specification, you get the official uh, definition of the language in terms of a meta model that describes the language in all details, its details. And also a concrete syntax that is the graphical symbols, the colors, the, the shapes, the sizes, and so on, that must be uh, say, uh, supported by uh, anyone wanting to use IFML. The big advantage is obviously uh, readability and understandability between people because everybody will share the same notation and same concepts. Besides this, IFML also provides a UML profile for IFML, an interchange format uh, in XMI that lets you uh, exchange, let's say, export IFML models in XMI for possible interoperability with other uh, modeling tools. This is a very quick extract, uh, excerpt from the UML profile, where if you want to model in UML, uh, IFML concepts, you can do it through this notation. These are, these are basically uh, containers, these are components, and these are uh, links and, the, uh, and references between elements in UML. Uh, the, the final goal of all of this is that you have a strong possibility of connecting your models with any, any kind of tools in the modeling environment, in the modeling space. Because suppose you could model in details IFML models in web ratio, and you can also from there connect to BPMN, connect and generate uh, running code down to last bit and pixel of uh, with a high quality industrial strength uh, uh, quality. But the other point is that through X XMI exchange, uh, you can export all your IFML models and open them, for instance, in some UML tool that support IFML in terms, for instance, for instance of profiles, because you could export your IFML model as an IFML profile and import it in a UML tool. Obviously, the same thing can be done the opposite way. If you are using a UML tool in your company, you are designing your systems, and then you need to model a detailed user interface, you can use the same tool in the company for modeling IFML in terms of IFML profile. Then if you want to go to detailed IFML modeling, you can export and use WebRacial or some other domain-specific tools that let you model uh, UIs according to FML. Uh, the other thing is you can also connect or uh, transform your models into other models, for instance, PPMN or UML, as we've uh, as we have seen before. Uh, from from from, uh, for instance, from a use case, I can generate some basic IFML, or from IFML, I can connect to some uh, sequence diagrams or others, or from BPMN, I can. Uh, generate and, and transform to uh, some basic UI that then, then I refine in a, an appropriate tool like WebRacial. Okay, so this is just one step. Obviously, one can continue and uh, integrate with other modeling uh, st uh, standards like CSML that is, let you specify in detail uh, system um, modeling. At the, at the system level, SOML for service-oriented architectures and many others. These ones are still in the MDA framework. And also, you, uh, uh, one could think to other modeling framework, like for instance, the Model Driven Enterprise Engineering framework. It's a framework that is very similar 
to what I've shown you so far, but it's uh, built with a different uh, technology, different approach. But again, IFML is perfectly fitting into the picture. And actually we are already interacting with uh, people working on MDE for, for, for possible integrations. Um, finally, uh, if you want to know a little bit more about in model driven engineering in general, we have a, also a book available, a small book uh, that describes the principles of uh, modeling languages and so on. And uh, obviously, uh, you can start looking and uh, using IFML uh, by first uh, going to webratio.com and downloading the tool. The tool is a commercial tool, but you can have a free uh, trial license. Uh, we also have an open source tool for IFML that provides the basic modeling capabilities. And the open source tool is also available. The, the source code is available on GitHub. Uh, so there is plenty of resources. And uh, on IFML.org, you can also find links uh, to other materials, to the, to the specification, to some examples, and so on. So uh, I think you have a, a good bunch of uh, tools for starting looking at the language. Um, just oh, one last thing I want to mention is that we are also in touch with other tool vendors, especially in the UML field for integrating IFML in their, in their offer. So uh, pretty soon it will be uh, very likely that you will see IFML in other tools uh, in, the, in the UML, uh, let's say, environment. So I think this is it uh, from my side. If you have any questions, I'd be happy to get, get uh, anything or any comment you have. Um, if you have questions, you can post them on the chat in the user interface of a GoTo, GoToWebinar. Um, if not, I think um, that uh, we can simply close here. So just last... Uh, 20 seconds for questions. Otherwise, uh, we close here the webinar. Uh, I wish to thank you all for attending. Uh, and uh, uh, I wish to thank Webratio for uh, the, the big challenge that it, it uh, started with, uh, with the standardization of IFML. Um, and with this, I think we can close. So thank you all and see you at the, web, at the next webinar. You can always contact me at the email or Twitter account you see on the slide. Thank you. Bye-bye.